Sometimes us gaming YouTubers and reviewers are just so dang lazy. Doing voiceovers like this oh, it just takes so much time. Editing takes even much, much more time and so much skill to do. And then of course writing entire scripts with your hands and the keyboard. Oh my, the cramps, the cramps I'm telling you, they're, they're awful people. And recently I was trying to write just a simple old Elden Ring review, but the game's just so long, there's so much to talk about. and. How does anyone even do this? It's just so dang hard, and there's so much to write about this 100 plus hour game. How do I get it all into just one video? It's it's basically impossible. Wouldn't it be just so much easier if you could just have when someone do it for you? I mean, come on. Oh, wait a second, what's this new tab? Oh, huh, that seems like a cool new feature. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> So I've been making videos for over a year now, I've learned quite a bit, and I think they've definitely gotten quite a bit better. And I say I am very proud that I have never used any sort of form of AI to write my scripts. But recently I noticed this feature on YouTube's inspiration tab while writing another video outline. And this supposedly allows you to create a video outline for yourself or maybe some sort of video idea. And I just couldn't resist, I had to see what it was gonna say. And I've also been playing a lot of Elden Ring's DLC, also a full new playthrough of the entire game. So I just thought, thought well, why not? Why does not do this on Elden Ring? So I typed in an outline for an Elden Ring game review. And honestly, I could not believe some of the shit I was getting out of these AI tools. It almost got me wondering, what are these even for? And are these even viable for anyone to use? Like, and is AI even good at writing these reviews? Should we really be scared that they're gonna take over the entire YouTube website? Well, currently, no. I mean, just look at some of the stuff that I was getting out of these reviews. So today I'm gonna dive deeper into the dark world of Elden Ring with the help from my little AI trio of buddies. So to start off, I used YouTube's internal AI video that, that gives you some sort of outline tool. And for the most part, I could definitely see how this helps. Despite for our little hiccup earlier where it said, you play as a character who must Elden Ring and calling the video game a must watch. Also, are you supposed to quote an AI in a video? Like, like you would quote a normal person? I, I don't know. That being said though, this outline is pretty minimal and honestly, it makes sense. I would think this makes sense and is in YouTube's best interest because they're trying to make engaging, they want people to make engaging content. And they really know that I think most people, you know, the biggest content creators really have a connection with their audience. And I don't think someone who's making complete AI stuff is gonna have that connection. Like I said, this is pretty minimal and I just wasn't satisfied. So I decided to go elsewhere because YouTube's obviously not helping out. They're, they're a little, you know, a little lagging behind on some of the other AI tools. So my next stop was the old people at Microsoft and their search engine that no one ever uses unless they're forced to by their company being Bing's co-pilot AI. I keep seeing ads for it when I'm watching the Olympic stuff. So I thought, why not give it a shot? You know, again, for a review of Elden Ring, it definitely puts in a lot more bullet points for the most part. But here it really seemed like it was just copying and pasting things from all around the internet. And a couple key points, though, that I want to take out strictly outlines that you should compare it to the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Like, yeah, I guess it makes sense because a lot of reviewers did do that because Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring have that same openness that not a lot of games have been able to accomplish in other genres. So it kind of, it's just funny, I think, that the AI just caught on to that trend to say, hey, play this other game that you might like it if you like Elden Ring even though I don't know there I don't think there's like the the Venn diagram is probably not as big and as much of a crossover as you might think and in the end it was also telling me to express awe and emotional intensity during gameplay <laughs> I mean come on guys like if you're gonna have to require someone to express awe and emotion that has to come like more naturally raw and like emotional responses to things especially with a game like Elden Ring where you're fighting these crazy bosses and stuff usually come from just in the moment like reactions to crazy things that happened you can't just say like express on emotional intensity it I don't think it works that way that's not how humans are but again we're not humans here so whatever and the last thing I like is that it does give some Bing does give some props to where it might have stolen some of its content and that's where it basically just outlines like hey there's this IGN review at the bottom and it also also puts like a little thing that says like enjoy exploring the lands between with a little star on it. I don't know, I guess it's cute. 
cute to show where you're stealing your content. Regardless, I don't know, I think this one was still relatively maybe harmless. I mean, there's not too much in here. You would still have to write quite a bit of your own like thoughts and opinions in here, and it's still, it's still just like a starting place. And from my perspective, these still just require way too much work for me. I mean, I need something with a little bit more substance, and I can't write an entire review with just a few bullet points. So I asked the big daddy of AI, ChatGPT. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that is a ton of words, goddamn. Just please stop, stop, this is, no, this is too much for me. So ChatGPT definitely gives you the most comprehensive for sure, including dates and when the game came out, the publisher, a brief summary, even has the audacity to review score the game at the very end of it. And fast forwarding through all the content that they read there, it's all pretty true. It's typical things you'd find in a real Elden Ring review, but I got to thinking, what's the point anymore of even writing a positive review of Elden Ring? I mean, come on, everyone's already talked so positively about the game. So <laughs> I want to know, what do you... What happens if you put in, write me a negative review or a controversial? This, that will really get people clicking. And here's what I got. The attempt at deep storytelling often feels more like showing off lore rather than delivering a coherent and engaging plot. What? I, don't, I mean, I guess it's kind of true. It's not the most straightforward story of all time, but I mean, I still think a lot of people who like these games like it for the kind of weirdness of how it tells its story and item descriptions and you gotta piece it all together. The dark fantasy aesthetic might initially impress with its detail, but it quickly becomes monotonous. The, the pervasive gloom and overly intricate designs contribute to a visually op oppressive experience that can make exploration feel laborious rather than enjoyable. This this doesn't make sense to me personally because my favorite part about Eldering is just that you can explore it for hours and hours and hours. I put a hundred and something into my very first playthrough, and this most recent one I just added onto it. I love that you can just get so lost into the world. So I guess I could see some people not liking having direction, and I don't, maybe that's maybe those are the people that this AI pulled it from, but I don't agree. It also mentions talking about the soundtrack and where it got it from, and the, and it says while the at, while it is atmospheric, it often fades into the background, lacking the memorable qualities needed to enhance the gaming experience. God damn, this is the one that kind of really pissed me off because I love Elden Ring's music so much and it does everything but fade into the fucking background. Like, there's so much veracity in their music and this one just, I don't know who, where they got this idea from, but it's just bullshit. <laughs> and ChatGPT has a tendency, it seems, to just like, give it a little, like, oh, you did a good job, but fuck you. I hate your music, I hate you, I hate where you live, I hate your face, I mean... It's starting to like, sound like that Kendrick song. And this other one kind of pissed me off too. It says, although the voice acting is competent, often lacks emotional depth and fails to elevate the story. I mean, like some of the very first lines in the game are like some of the most impactful and crazy voice acting that you can hear from the like a beginning in the game. Like this guy goes off telling you about the Elden Ring. Now this was all great, of course. You know, I had fun doing this, but... I did want to take it one more step further, and I just thought, well, what happens if you decide to ask Chappie G GP to take this review, this negative one, and say, now make it sound like I'm drunk? And I was just really curious to see what it is. I didn't think I'd keep this in the video until I saw the results. It was just so weird, but I love some of the things that it decided to say. Like the plot overview is like, okay, so the story is like, sure, you're like this place called the between and you gotta fix this Elden Ring thing. Sounds cool, right? But it's like the game's trying to like be all mysterious and high row, but really it's just confusing. Like, why can't they just tell us what's going on without all the riddles? I'm trying to like be drunk. I'm not actually drunk right now, but that's my that's the best I can do. It also likes to throw in some more jokes now because I realize there's been a lack of jokes throughout the rest of these, and one of them is it says that the character customization customization is like trying to put together ikea furniture after a few drinks <laughs> and then when commenting or reviewing the visual style it says everything's gloomy and moody and it starts to feel like you're walking through a never-ending storm it's cool at first and then you're like okay i get it it's dark <laughs> Which, I mean, fair enough, there were a couple parts of the game that did feel a little too dark, but I don't know. I just love how it writes that. 
It also wants to go after the soundtrack again, which again, it don't, doesn't make sense of all the complaints that you have to put in this game. It says, well, it's not really doing anything special. It could use a little bit more oomph, you know? And this, again, this one just really pissed me off to the point where I had to ask, have you actually listened to the Elden Ring soundtrack? And then it, it fesses up and says that no, it hasn't. Because of course it's an AI robot. I can't listen to music. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm clearly the idiot here. And then finally, it does give you another, it does give the game another review where it puts it down to 5 out of 10. I don't know if this is just because it's drunk, so it doesn't know what to do, but, you know, a negative review for you is a 6 out of 10, and if you're drunk, I guess it takes it down another one. I don't, I would think it's the opposite, personally. I would think if you're drunk, you're having more fun. That's how it would work for me. Anytime I've had a little bit of something to, when I play a video game, I'm usually enjoying it more. But I guess in ChatGPT's mind, if you drink, it's it's worse. But I think the gist I got out of this is if you are interested in AI tools, maybe you can find some use out of the YouTube one. You know, it gives you an outline. It gives you that inspiration that I was talking about. But I, I don't know if I'd want to. I hope that people aren't actually using these AI tools that much because I really do think that they are taking, I mean, I think we know they are taking it from other places. And I think it really just loses that human element. But at the same time, it does make it pretty funny to just go back and see what it would say. And I'm going to try and like put this in a Google Doc and put it in the description somewhere just so you can review, especially like this drunk one. It's just funny. Just if you want to take a look at it. I Again, I thought it was interesting. Maybe you want to try it with your own game or a game you're interested in just to mess around with it. YouTube's inspiration AI tool might be pretty helpful. Bing's, I felt too much, like, because they put that IGN in one in there, I get that they're, like, linking, oh, look at this, but it made it feel too much like, oh, we're just directly copying this from IGN's review. And then the chat GPT one, it was a just a huge info dump. And I also like how it just says, feel free to modify and expand upon any section based on your own specific insights or focus on areas or focus areas for the review. And I mean, like, well, duh. I mean, if you're making a YouTube video or writing a review on something, like, you should be doing that already. And this outline does have a lot of information for you to kind of almost skip certain parts. But I would be kind of lying if I said that this thing maybe did some jokes that are funnier than my own. So I will give chat GPT in that, that. I don't think I could have wrote a better drunk, fake drunk review of Elden Ring. I'd probably have to be really drunk to actually do that. So it was relatively impressive. Anyways, that's really it. I didn't end up reviewing Elden Ring or its DLC very much, even though I went through an entire playthrough thinking I was going to do a traditional review. Maybe I still will, but I just found this incredibly funny to me. Maybe no one else will, but if you like this video, I have no other videos like this. This is a one-of-a-kind kind of thing. So, um, thanks for watching.